In this video, we're going to begin taking a comprehensive look at the new PBR shading system in 3D Coat's Sculpt workspace. I want to reemphasize for anyone who's new to 3D Coat that shaders only work on voxel or surface mode objects that reside here in the Sculpt workspace and not any other environment. For example, if you were to import a low polygon UV mapped model into the Paint workspace, in order to apply textures to it, then shaders are not applicable to that model. And again, this is intended to work with high polygon or voxel objects. With that said though, you can paint on any of the PBR textures. Let me just demonstrate that quickly. 3D Coat has two painting platforms. One is UV maps based texture painting, and then it has vertex painting where it's storing all the color and specularity information on the vertices of the high poly sculpt. So let me add a new layer here and I have my color and specularity channel turned on. I'm going to increase my brush size by right clicking and dragging left and right. As I paint you can see there is no more color tinting which used to apply to your shaders previously. In other words, if you had a brownish clay shader, then some of that brown color would tint the actual paint color, and that's not what you want. I'm just going to hit the delete key to clear the paint on that layer, and this time let's crank the metalness all the way up, also our glossiness. So now I'm basically painting chrome. While it may seem like I've straight off topic a little bit here, this is actually a small feature of the new PBR shading system where you can get an exact color representation when painting over the top of these new shaders. Let's go ahead and choose one of these metal smart materials. I'll just choose something like this. You could use a paintbrush or the field bucket tool. In this case I'll just stick with the paintbrush. It's important to note that the PBR shaders are not intended to be a replacement for the PBR smart materials, but they introduce much of the same technology such as GGX lighting and physically based rendering. You also have an expanded set of options and parameters in the shader options panel, but still it's limited in comparison. This would be a good juncture to mention a very important point, and that is whenever you choose to use vertex painting during the process of modeling or sculpting, you do stand to lose some of your work because you're performing rather destructive operations when you merge objects together or perform extreme booleans. Let me hide this layer, for example, and I'm going to turn on some of these other paint layers. And you can see this particular layer did lose some information while sculpting. Later on, I had to go back and paint over the top of that, but you can do quite a bit of texture work before you ever begin the baking process. And when you're ready to do your texture baking onto your UV mapped low polygon version, you should get an exact correlation between what you see in the viewport and the baking result. So now let's go ahead and get started by sampling a few different shaders and then we'll go a little bit deeper into the actual parameters and options in the shader options panel. We'll make sure I have the right layer selected for the head. And just select a few others. This is the default. Then you have some matte cap or pick matte shaders these are intended to use while you're sculpting, but not necessarily for baking purposes. You can use it for baking, but you may not get an exact look when you go through the baking process. Only the PBR shaders will give you an exact representation. So yeah, when you are working with metals, paints, leather material, even cloth and wood materials, then it's a major step up from what you had previously. I'm going to turn my environment map on and we can adjust our contrast. 
if we're trying to get an idea of what the final result is going to look like, we want less contrast in our environment map lighting. However, if we are sculpting, let's choose one of these other matte cap shaders, then we probably want a little bit more contrast. That way we can see the fine wrinkles much easier. Now with any of these shaders, you can quickly apply the shader not only to the parent but all the child layers at the same time by right clicking and choosing apply to subtree. If I want to apply the shader to everything that's visible, then you can right click and choose apply to visible. For example, I'll hide the eye because I don't want to have to reselect that, but everything else now I can right click and choose apply to visible. Let's right click and look at some of our options here. We can delete the shader if we need. Construct new shader. When you make a modification to any shader, be very careful to use construct new shader if you plan to keep the new changes but not apply those changes to the currently selected shader. Okay, We have an option for making permanent changes or at least changes going forward. We can also use edit current objects shader settings but let's say if I made changes that I want to apply to some other objects in the scene, then I want to construct a new shader from it so that I can use this new shader on all those objects. And then if for some reason you need to refresh the preview or all previews, you have options for those here. If we want to change the scale of the thumbnails, we can change them here. If you see something like this, you can always just slightly readjust your panels and it will refresh. Okay, so let's hover over a shader and right click and I'll choose normal. Right click and choose big. And for demonstration purposes I'm going to dock this inside so we have a little bit more real estate to work with. All right. Now we want to look at the new subsurface scattering shader, which is labeled skin, this one here. So I'm going to apply that. I'm going to apply it to visible. It doesn't look like much now, but it is pre-configured for human skin. And what we want to do, if we want to preview it while we are in this viewport, we can choose cast shadows. I have a hotkey set for that, so you can turn your shadows on and off. You'll get a rough approximation in this viewport, but to see the full effect, we need to go to the render room so that it can do the ray casting here. I've got real-time render already checked, but with that unchecked, it will look just like what we saw in the scope room when we had shadows turned on. So let's turn on real-time render. It's going to use your graphic card to do all the heavy lifting. And while it's rendering, let's go ahead and look at our shader options panel. I'm going to choose Construct New Shader. I'll pull it off to the side. And we can adjust our subsurface scattering degree. Let's bring it all the way back up. Let's turn our glossiness all the way up. And then you see we have these other parameters, and these are contingent upon the Use Cavity option being checked. So when you check Use Cavity, you'll have these other parameters for Cavity and Bulge. All right, so let's turn the Cavity Glossiness all the way up, and then our Bulge Glossiness all the way up. I'm going to turn cavity intensity way down and then I'm going to do the same for bulge. We can change our subsurface scattering color. Let's change it to orange or even purple. We'll take it back to red. Right, okay. 
So depending on your graphic card, it may take a few seconds or it may take you know up to a minute or so for it to fully calculate all the GI and render out the entire effect. You can adjust the translucent amount as well. Okay. So I'll leave that there. There's our new material. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Edit Permanent Shader Settings because on this permanent shader I do want to bring the glossiness back down. So the overall glossiness of 0.5 and like the cavity glossiness maybe 0.15 bulge glossiness uh, 0.3 and I'll hit OK. So let's turn our real-time render off. I'm going to go back into the paint room and I'm going to really don't need that layer right now. I'm going to unhide all of these others. Go back into the sculpt room. Let's refresh that preview. There we go. And I'm going to turn shadows off in the viewport. So this is what we see here in our sculpt environment, but when we step into the render room, because I'm using a subsurface scattering shader, even with the paint layers on top of that, I'll still see much of that subsurface scattering effect. So that's a quick look at subsurface scattering using the skin shader. And we'll stop right here and pick up in the next video using another model where we're going to create different types of shaders such as leather, cloth, and glass. Okay, so stay tuned and we'll see you then.